Good? OK. Uh, so yeah, so what I've written uh, is just a simple, it's what you might write if you were going to implement the member function. Uh, so if the list is null, we return false. Uh, if the head of the list equals v, return true. Uh, otherwise, recur with the tail of the list. Uh, so then we can run this, this thing to make sure that we get the right answer. Uh, <coughs> so what this language does for us is for every function that we define, it actually defines a handful of functions that we can use uh, to determine information about it, uh, the function's running time. So one of the things that we get is what we call a step counting function. Uh, and so basically how this works is it's going to actually run, uh, it's going to follow the same path that the function would have followed if we had called it with the same arguments. So, and it's going to give us back a number which tells us, uh, it gives us a rough estimate of how many operations we performed in that function. Uh, so to make this clearer, I can show you uh, roughly what this translation looks like. So, so here we say that for any built-in operation like null huh or eek, uh, we say that the cost of that operation is one plus the cost to evaluate all of the arguments. Uh, so for example, for this if, uh, we say we assign a cost one for the if, uh, and then for the null uh, expression, we say two is the cost there, right? So then we do the same thing. Uh, and then at some point, we see a, when we see a conditional, we actually have to evaluate the test expression to see which path we want to take, uh, if we want to take the true or false branch. So for example, here, we're going to check to see if v is equal to the head of the list. If not, we return one, which is the cost of evaluating true. Otherwise, we recur uh, into the step counting function with the tail of the list. So <coughs> these numbers by themselves aren't very useful. What we like to do is plot them uh, to give us an idea of how the function's running time grows as, as a function of si the size of its input. So we can do this with this curve function. Uh, and the way this works is we call it uh, with a function or a lambda that takes one argument, which is the input size, and then we give it back uh, some input that we use to, uh, to call the function. Uh, so here what we're doing is we're saying call this function, uh, we're calling it 100 times, and each time uh, this n is going to be some number between 1 and 100. So we call it with 3 and then a list of size n, right? So what this will do is plot the running time for us. So this isn't very helpful, right? We think this should be a linear time function, but what we see is this plateau where we stop after a certain uh, input size. So does anybody know why that is? Right. So we're calling this function with concrete inputs, right? So that I mean, we, the running time will change. We don't really care about this 3, right? We don't care about v, right? We care about how the function's running time grows as, as a function of the size of the input list, right? Yeah. I'll make it 100. OK. Or do you want to do random? You do random too. Yeah, let's try that. <laughs> so that doesn't look good either, right? Uh, so we need some way to uh, call the function with uh, structured data, but we need to abstract away certain uh, values that would be specific. So what we do is we use a form of abstract, abstract interpretation. Uh, so what we say, we use this all thing here to represent an unknown value, which could be, it could be any S expression, right? Uh, we're basically saying we don't care what this thing is. So I want to call this member function with uh, a sort of a partially known, uh, a partially known structure is what we call it. So in this case, in both cases, we're going to return all, right? Because it's impossible for us to know if all is, in fact, a member of any list, right? Uh, so then this affects the way that we calculate running time in these uh, step counting functions, right? So if we see, for example, here, we see uh, these if 
these test expressions in the ifs, right? So, but if either, if these test expressions evaluate to all, then we don't actually know which branch to take in the if, right? So we just take both branches and then take the max of those. So then we get worst case, right? So if we run this thing again and plot the curve, this time calling it with all for v and then a list of alls of size n, then we see the nice sort of linear curve that we would expect, right? So, and we can do other things um, to kind of flesh this out a little bit more. We'd actually write, so we could write a union function that takes the union of two lists. And this function actually calls the member function, right? So we're gonna have to, at some point, we're not only gonna have to actually call member uh, to figure out which branch of this if to take, but we also have to call it step counting version to calculate uh, its running time with actual inputs. So we can uh, so we can run union. That looks correct. And then here, what we're going to do is plot the curve of union's worst case time uh, using basically what we do is we just construct two lists with, which contain uh, n alls, right? So there we see uh, what, what is sort of the beginnings of a quadratic uh, curve, which is what you might expect. Uh, so, uh, and this is, yeah, this is, this is basically what we have right now. Uh, we'd like to do a lot more with uh, these numbers. We think that you know, we could do something interesting, uh, hopefully in the form of uh, allowing the programmer to make assertions about some function that they write uh, and check to see whether uh, that function's worst case running time actually conforms to that assertion uh, or satisfies that assertion. Uh, and it's and also it's very slow. For example, uh, if I've tried to run this thing with uh, a bit larger number like that, we'd probably be here all, all night. So uh, it, there's a lot of optimization work to be done as well. So but that's that's it. So. Uh, then you would never terminate. So. <laughs>